In this tutorial, you will learn how to render video pieces and audio pieces in your timeline. So, we've got our file open, we've saved it, timeline editing, and we've got some files here that we'll be editing with. And we've got our timeline, we've got a couple of audio pieces, you know by the little horn next to it, and you've got some JPEG files here that we'll kind of play with and see what rendering does. So let's go ahead and import this audio here. I'll just simply click and drag it into our timeline. And then we're going to need these JPEGs, which will act as a video and go under the video track. I've got some here of the Beasley Broadcasting Center, some of the old plans, new plans, and the old Boom Bus Depot. So let's go ahead and, and do this in a chronological order. We'll go ahead and we'll click and drag the Boon Bus JPEG here into our timeline. And you notice the green bar coming across the top. And we'll go ahead and do the new Beasley plan here towards the end. Oh, something happened there. When we imported it into our timeline, it basically split the audio and put the piece in between the two. So we don't want that. What we need to do is undo what we did. So we go to edit, undo, and we've got our piece not doing that. So let's try it again of dragging the piece into our timeline. And that time it didn't do it. Sometimes Final Cut Pro can be tricky with this. And sometimes you need to lock tracks, which is over here on the left side of your timeline. If you simply lock the tracks, and you move these around, nothing happens to any other tracks that's locked. So, sometimes that's just something to be cautious about. Don't get frustrated. Just remember you can always undo it, edit, undo, or as you see the quick command, Apple Z, and it'll undo it, and you can just go about your editing. So we've got our pieces in there. They're green still, and keep in mind, green means that it's, it's it can play back but you need to render it before burning it to tape or in this case printing it to DVD. The other thing to keep in mind that we've got here is up here is our sequence canvas that that we have our title safes turned on as well as our frame wire. Now what this enables you to do title safe is this inner one that basically shows you this can play in this section the inner square on any TV. So to turn that on, we click our wireframe tab here. Image and wireframe we want on. I'll explain that shortly. And show title safe. That's what we want. Title safe in order to be able to show what exactly it is that we want. And it's safely going to be able to appear on any television or viewer window. Now as you can see, this, is, this image stretches out beyond the title safe. So to simply change that, since we've got our image and wireframe on, you can go here to the outskirts of the image, and you see you get the little perpendicular thin-lined little icon there. And you can simply click and drag as small or as big as you want. Well, let's be safe with this, and go ahead and put it on our title safe. Now, as you can see, the square is fit to fit our window exactly the size. But what about if you wanted to get a little bit wider with it? You can change the zoom of the window. So you can see now we've got a little bit more room to edit. So let's say we wanted to fit it just within the title safe in order to be able to see it completely. And let's go ahead and play it back here. Now remember, because it's green up here, we can play it back in our viewer, but we need to render it before printing it to tape. So, we've clicked in our timeline where we want the playhead to begin. We simply hit the space bar or click play. And as my computer thinks about it, and there's our image right here, exactly where we wanted it to be. Now, if we want to zoom in a little bit to see, we can fit to window and it pops back up exactly where we want it to be. 
The other thing you can do here is double click the image and it comes up here as well into your viewer which you can edit uh, some motion into it, um, different kind of filters. Uh, there's all sorts of things you can do with images in Final Cut Pro. But we'll save that for later on. Or if you have specific questions, you can just ask me. So, what we need to do is render these pieces before being able to print them to DVD. Now, if these were red, let's see if I can try and get them to be red. We'll split this up. Move that down. No, it still stays green. But, let's say I put some motion onto this image simply by adding a motion keyframe, adding another motion keyframe, and here at this point I want to focus in on the old bus depot here. And then we'll zoom in pretty good on it. And that'll be it. So let's say we wanted that. It's still going to be green probably. But for the sake of showing you what you can do with Final Cut. And that's an option. If anything, that video can show you what you can do with images with Final Cut Pro. Um, but for now, we still definitely do need to render this. As you can see, it's green here across the top. So to do that, we'll go to the top here of our menu. We'll click Sequence. And then you've got these different render options. Uh, you can render only what's in preview since it's green. There's all different things that you can render. I typically like to just click Render All. This takes care of everything, uh, anything and everything that wouldn't be allowed to go onto the DVD yet that you would want, want there. So we'll click Render All. The processing window pops up. Uh, as you see, it can take, depending on how much you have, um, it will determine how long it takes to render. Uh, don't have a whole, whole lot, but because of this audio, how long this audio piece is, it takes a little bit longer. So now you see that these are blue, and that is good. Blue means rendered, it's ready to go, we won't have any issues with anything, especially come time when we print it to tape. So that's rendering items in your timeline in Final Cut Pro.